<laughs> anyway, uh, Terry. Nancy Anomi. Roger Smith. Here. Nicole Cohen. Here. Pat Rooney. Here. Joan Averetta. Okay, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Okay, thank you. Superintendent, and so that she can, if any of you haven't been to one of these before, that, so that she can explain the format and why we have them. Okay. Um, and I felt perhaps that was important since we're notifying more people about our, our uh, board meetings, every open meeting. On the work session is the one that's prior to the regular board meeting. The purpose is to go through the agenda for the meeting next week and have the opportunity for the board members to ask any questions, make any comments, ask for clarifications, request additional information, so that when we actually come to the formal board meeting, all of the information is present that is needed in order to make a decision. And so that's where the work sessions are less formal. There is no action on the work session agenda. There is no um, call to the public on the work session agenda, because the purpose of that is to review the agenda for next week. All right. Okay, so I guess so, the next step would uh, be to do, do I make a motion? Somebody needs to make okay. a motion to oh, accept can the we, agenda. Can someone I move that we accept the agenda. Second. <coughs> Pat Rooney? Yes. Nicole Cohen? Yes. Roger Smith? Here. Yes. Nancy Anoni? Yes. So in, uh, for the agenda for next week, the opening of the meeting is um, normal. We have a recognition of visitors this next time. Um, in this particular case, we are looking at the awarding of financial reporting achievements to LHUSD. And then we also will have our parent and community engagement committee doing a presentation of the annual goals for that committee. For the action items on the consent calendar, the first item is the approval of minutes. The minutes that we have this time are for our regular session on October 18th. <coughs> we have our special board meeting on October 3rd. A special board meeting on October 6th. And then we have the special board meeting on October 6th that was relating to the AFR presentation. Special board meeting on October 13th. And we have the minutes of the work session that was held on October 6th. recommendation to approve the agenda, and 3.13 then is the consent calendar. So the first, um, excuse me, we already have a consent calendar, is the uh, personnel report. And so the personnel report includes the actions in relation to certificated and classified staff, and the appropriate backup documentation. Item 3.14 is the approval of vouchers. We also have the student activity funds for K8 and 912 and the auxiliary funds for September. <coughs> Item 3.15 is the acceptance of gifts and donations. We move into the Action items. The first one is our old business. 
12.1. This was the uh, policy on student surveys, which we've had discussion around now for a bit. And this is the second reading of the final revisions that we have. And then 4.2 is the related policy on uh, educational research agencies. And again, this is the second reading after that discussion and revisions. Item 4.3 is the second reading on the um, promotion and retention of students. And this is in relation to language that has been deleted or added and added language around the students who are um, needing intervention would be able to get that during the summer. That's for third grade, is that right, Yes. The second one is 4.4, .4, which is the uh, revised policy on the CPR training that will be required in high school. Second reading. 4.5 is the second reading on open enrollment. Again, there have been no changes on these. And then 4.6 is um, the discussion on the action regarding to the Arizona School Boards Association. And this one was tabled because the board wanted to have more time to review that information for the ASBA. So that is included in your packets again. And we can discuss that. Yeah, because uh, I think I'm the one that uh, someone recommended that we table it. Uh, I did take the time, I sort of wondered about these, uh, the different proposals, and so I did take the time to call uh, ASBA and to ask them about it, and uh, that proposal, A, uh, I, I, I had sort of an interesting conversation, and of course the, uh, the uh, governance board is uh, uh, recommending that uh, if they miss more than one meeting, and as of right now, uh, that's sort of, uh, that isn't written in stone. And uh, I got the feeling after talking to them that, uh, that the reason they like to have that down in black and white is it, it takes sort of the onus off of the members to make that decision and it makes it, uh, uh, whoever's going to get on that, it puts it out in front of them right away that, uh, that if they're going to participate in that, that they should be at the meetings. So, you no, know, I wouldn't have a hard, I wouldn't have a difficult problem disappointing people if they didn't come there. But that's not everyone. So I think that's really why they wanted that down there. And I sort of like it because it's right out front. So if you get involved, make the meetings. If you miss more than one, then you're uh, out of it. How often do they meet? Quarterly. Yeah, that's. You can't make that commitment, then. Yeah. But you should excuse yourself. And evidently, they've had an issue. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, sometimes when the hammer has to come down, the people have difficulty doing that. And but this takes that off of right. them because it's right out front. Yeah. And then uh, that second thing, I, I, uh, proposal B, the Chino Valley USD recommends that a bylaw be amended or repealed by two thirds of the members that are voting instead of the two-thirds vote of the entire membership and the lady I talked to the whole problem with that is like if only 60 people show up there or 60 people participate uh, you you narrow that down so it just seems to me in my opinion is if, if you're going to make this organization viable then, and you have a hundred and some odd districts or whatever uh, they ought to all have it in there because you could get a uh, small number participating and they could really ramrod stuff through and uh, wouldn't be really representative of all of the districts. So. Does it kept them from being able to take action? Um, Sounds like it. That's yeah. what, there's 200 member boards. Yeah, 200, so yeah. if, and you can vote electronically, like we're going to vote on this electronically, yeah. but if we don't, then it affects the right. outcome of of the bylaw change. So, so that, that was the, uh, the concern there uh, on that proposal coming out of Chico Valley. 
you know, and as uh, like uh, Nicole said, if it's that easy to get on uh, and just do it electronically, then then the boards are remiss if they're not participating as far as I'm concerned. And then they can always get a hold of them and say, well, you didn't participate. That's the, that's the whole idea. And then on C, uh, the ASBA Hispanic Native American Indian Caucus proposal will allow a seat on the ASBA Board of Directors for the President and past Presidents of HNAIC and one for the President of the Black Caucus. Uh, evidently, uh, evidently, the uh, Hispanic and the Native American, uh, from what she explained to me, they're, they're sort of joined together. So instead of having two separate uh, uh, people there, like the Black Caucus, uh, they um, uh, so they want to make it sort of equal uh, there. You know, my own feeling on this is I know that uh, some communities have unique problems. I, I don't want to do all the talking, so I don't want to influence what your decision uh, by any means. But, you know, uh, my thing is that uh, uh, if you have, um, you know, you have all, I, I know that some uh, communities have, like, unique issues in education. You know, any of you have been up on the reservation for certain areas like that, you have unique issues. But at the same time, I think in education, uh, you have, um, uh, the focus is on the, the, the child. And uh, I really hate, uh, my own personal opinion, is to see things get fragmented. I mean, it all sounds good and good justification. But uh, I just, uh, I see sometimes this happening and, uh, I, you know, I just, I wonder about that. Uh, where, in other words, let, like I told the gal, I said, uh, what if we had an Irish caucus? Of course, they'd probably say those people can't understand anything. So I could say that because my grandparents were from Ireland, so that wouldn't be a problem. But, uh, so well, and, the, and I can understand, I mean, much like the rural areas, much like the rural areas yeah. run into the fact that state of Maricopa Yes. Districts may be overly represented because it's easier for them to participate. There is a lot of them close together. I, that's what I wondered when I read this: is yeah. have they been have their issues been underrepresented? Because I'm kind of a fan of asking the question about whose voice is absent at the table that should be here. Yeah. So is that what they're asking? I have a problem with the altogether, I know. and. Um, I think that it sends a really bad message that we're constantly, you know, we need to have a Hispanic person representing the Hispanic, you know, school children. And I think if you're living in a predominantly Hispanic or Native American near a reservation, you automatically have people on your member boards that are representative of that um, population. But the idea that we put an overemphasis on um, increasing a certain um, representation for the black caucus or the Hispanic caucus, I think that's awful that we're doing that in education. Everybody who's in education is there to serve all the kids, whether or not they're, no matter what their color or religious preferences or whatever. So I would, I'd like to see us get away from that. So I have a problem with Proposal C. But I have a problem with it across the board, not just in education, but in D.C., period. May I interject? Because I was at the ASBA meeting down at the Wave restaurant. And what I found interesting is when we start talking about the caucuses, the representation in the caucus may not necessarily be in the, in the ethnic or pigeonholed uh, demographic that we're talking about on, on this piece of paper right now. You can have somebody representing that, that issue that is, is the head of a caucus, and it's district membership that they're representing and not location or necessarily ethnic minority. We could have representation as Lake Havasu Unified School District on the Native American or black caucuses just because we have students enrolled in our district who are in those caucuses. And I found that interesting. I also found interesting that this almost sounds like a quota system when you stop and think about it. 
and, and there was actually a gentleman at the meeting who was going to be seated on the Mojave Valley, uh, or the Fort Mojave, excuse, excuse me, elementary board, who literally said it was a quota system who was African American. He took exception to it right away. I personally don't like this. I, I think that we're gaming, we're gaming a system that's already gamed to serve the population that it reaches. And then, uh, we want to take over the we're on We'll go ahead until thing. we finish okay. this. Okay. And, and then on the proposal D, uh, ASBA Governance Committee proposes a change that would require a candidate <laughs> wishing to run from the floor uh, for the executive position must provide written notification to the nominating committee and executive director one week prior to the annual membership meeting. And I think after talking to him that that proposal is coming out of the governance committee is just to bring a little more organization to uh, these people that are interested in running uh, for the uh, uh, executive officer position so that they, uh, you know, that they could have a, 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 a better idea rather than all of a sudden like uh, nominations from the floor and stuff like that. See now, you, you call it organization, I call it control. And I see it as a way that they're trying to control the floor. And I have a problem with this one too, because if somebody can run from the floor and articulate themselves well enough to earn themselves a seat on the executive committee, I want to see them there. Because I know how these organizations work. It's not much different than any other political organization. And you've got nominating committees, and they decide who they want to see as, uh, as picked for you know, I'm thinking about it in our local area and precinct committeemen and, and things. That's my exposure to it. But you have a group of people that control everything, and and for that reason, I don't I don't like that. But would, would this prevent them? Uh, I mean, uh, this is preventing anybody from from running how, from the. How is it preventing? Well, because they're being required to submit in advance. Isn't that what this one is? One week notice. Yeah, one a, a written notification. Right. One week ahead of time. But I don't see, because you have to supply that, that they're, they're sifting through it. In other words, you could have a number of people go ahead and, and say, look, I'd like to run for this position or whatever. And so at the same time, they, they've gone ahead and uh, this is just notification. Right. The You're notifying the committee so that the committee then has a week to pick up the phone and call 200 member boards and tell them why this is not a good idea why this person is not a good idea. And then the membership hears um, the opinions of the people who ultimately want to control everything versus the per person on the floor speaking. And do we know that that's true? Did they give any background for what caused them to put this item on the... I didn't call them. Yeah. No, I, I don't know if they did uh, to I Pat could, uh, or Joe. Before the next meeting, uh, you could call them or I could call them just to get a clarification. They were more willing to talk about it. I, I didn't. I, I saw this, you know. Uh, you know. I saw this as a, a, an opportunity to, to say how many people are really interested in this, and we've got it, and that they would still be there for the uh, annual membership meeting, and uh, you know, then they could art and they'd say, okay, we've got five people, and here are the five people, and would you like to say something or whatever? But I just uh, looked at it as a. Not as an elimination thing, but more of an organization thing. Just I mean, I've seen not this exact thing, but I've seen something similar used to keep others from nominating somebody that doesn't want to be nominated. So by turning this in ahead of time, they're saying, I'm willing to be nominated and serve if chosen. Well, I think one of the first questions when somebody is nominated is to ask them if they're willing to serve. So mm -hmm. I don't. I think that's making an issue out of something that's not an issue. Can be. <coughs> Maybe it could be, but I haven't heard anything that this has been a problem. So it makes me right. question why right. they're trying no, I, to change it. I understand it. that. You know, do they every year? Because I don't go to those meetings. Do they have people running from the floor, creating a big disruption? Right. I haven't read anything about that, so it makes right. me question why they'd want to change it. No, in I understand their bylaws. that. That's why I'm asking too. What, sure. what prompted this? Yeah, my guess would be uh, I kind of think Nicole's got something there because when I served on that legislative mm -hmm. committee. Mm -hmm.
it was kind of a little closed door Insider club. Group. And I tell you, I wasn't impressed. So okay. I, I, I would say get rid of this. Yeah. You know, and if they want, if they need some documentation or something like that, then you can submit it at the meeting right then today. Sure. Here you are. Sure. I mean, if that's if that's something for organizational purposes, then that should suffice. Not giving them a whole week to do their thing. Okay. If I may share some information, sure. um, I was also at the meeting, and proposals D, E, and F are all related to running from the floor. Right. And so, um, if I, I'm trying to think of how he worded it, but basically, so if proposal F1, it wouldn't matter what you voted on D and E, um, but mm -hmm. the, uh, if all of them do not pass, then the existing would remain in place, which is anybody can run on the floor. Correct. Mm -hmm. So then we would vote no on uh, D and all of these. Yeah. That would be that would be your decision for me if okay. you chose to. Okay. Discussion. All right. Okay, that's my two cents. And, and there is more detail on the back of the page here. Yeah. <clears throat> in the action items, and this one is the Parent and in Community Engagement Plan, <clears throat> and that is the um, presentation that will be at the beginning of the meeting from our committee, from our PACE committee. <coughs> will we also get the hard copy from um, PIS? I think the PIS yes. Was it not emailed out? It was emailed out. Yeah, um, but she did not get a chance to make the hard copy, so you were Okay, I just wanted <laughs> Item 5.2 is the, um, is a <coughs> request for a National Honor Society to travel for leadership training to Chicago, Illinois. Item 5.3. This is a recommendation that the Governing Room Board approve a consultant agreement with Missy Wood to provide some hours to support our new business director, whoever that should be. This provides for approximately 200 hours of support, not to exceed that amount. <laughs> Item 5.4 is a request for travel. This is uh, two parts. First is for our new board, member, new board members to attend the ASA new board member orientation. And then it is also to approve for Ms. Navaretta and myself to attend the dinner um, at which Jenny Sautner will receive a Golden Bell Award for Arizona's Teacher of the Year. Item six is the information report. Any questions? I think um, the last two items, um, I'm glad the board meeting won't take place until after this whole election is done, but I think with the pending override, I think this is going to be highlighted in our next school board meeting, uh, the dollars. Um, what we're doing, um, what we're spending money on, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of teachers will feel like it's at the expense of them, and I think it's important for us to uh, keep that in mind. Um, I have a problem with the consulting agreement, obviously. Uh, we did that last year, and it didn't work out the way I thought it was going to. And in light of the fact that I still have a lot of pending questions from Missy e. Wood, I'm, I'm not encouraged to support, obviously, a contract for her to train anybody. Um, I understand that it's typical, uh -huh. you know, when somebody's leaving. I understand that. Um, and then as far as the going to the ASBA awards dinner, I 
I wish that the the expenses were spelled out more because I'm looking at lodging registration, fleet, fleet costs. I'm looking at that times four, and then I'm looking at the dinner only. Are those costs truly really for one night and attending a dinner? Is this total for everybody? This is total for everybody. That's not one. Person. Okay. Yes. Sorry, this is the maximum cost. Okay. We're not going yes. to the four seasons. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but yeah. isn't it the Biltmore? <laughs> well, they get a discount. Um, this is for how many? We have six people. Okay, and this, and this just said, yeah, it's four. six people total. Four people. Well, it's four. No, it's, um, no, you're right. It's six people. Sorry. Six people. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and it doesn't say, it just indicates, like when I went to the school board training, it was three days. But this just looks like one day. This is for the, um, the new, member, new member training. Right. The agenda is on the back of that. It's one full day for new board members. Okay. Um, so this was not for the... Uh, the remainder of the workshop, although if those, I understand that at least one of our board members would like to do that on their own. One of our perspective, we elected board members. Okay, so because I made it clear that I only support this kind of, uh, you know, travel for new incoming people because I, it's an important. Yes. So we're only going to pay for them for one day? Yes, that's the registration. Oh, there's only one day. Yes. Well, how did they condense three days of school board training into one day? That's weird. Couldn't answer that. Okay. All right. May, may I make a, a, a may I ask a question on the uh, contract? For Mrs. Is that okay? Yes. Um, are we anticipating that we're going to use all 200 hours? Is that, is that something where we've, so we've selected the individual and we know what our anticipated cost is going to be in the consulting, or, or are we just making a blank contract? It was really just a, a maximum not to exceed. Okay. And so thinking about the, this was um, more of the technical forms and things that need to be completed, and you know, there's times of the year when certain reports are due, so uh, the idea would be that there could be a day or several hours in, in, within a week. Right. But this would go from um, to cross over, and that's partly why it's a little bit longer, is to cross over through December so we could get through questions that could come up at closing of the year and finalizing the books and audit and AFR. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so, so we are anticipating 200 hour outlay? No, or? not. No, that would be a not to exceed. Okay. I'm not anticipating that that would be. It's going to depend on who you hire and what their yes, experience level is. I'm just wondering if we couldn't tighten that up a little bit, again, knowing that we're going to have this cash crunch coming up. Well, I think that and typically on these things, at least the way that we had it set up with Gail, that before um, the directors were the ones that would make the phone calls, but before they would do that, I think it kind of, kind of came through the board, didn't it? How was that set up? Or you were the only ones that could do it. Was the right. were the directors uh, specifically? And so in this case, it would only be the superintendent that could make the, the call. I mean, so it wouldn't be like a new person getting there and, and calling every five minutes to I, rack up hours. It would I, be the superintendent saying, "I need to get a comfort level with this. Let's call." I, I understand that, but but I also watch government entities, when they put money in a budget, there's a propensity to spend that money. And I think that we did that right, wrong, or different. I'm not here to pass judgment on what happened with Gail's contract like this. We went ahead and spent the money anyway, even though we didn't use any hours. And so my thought process is, is, to, is to, I think we may be in a position where we might need to use something like that. But I'd like to see a tighter rein on it. Just my thought process is is, and then it can always be something that's brought back and extended if it, if we do start to run shot. So you would do like a three thousand dollars possibly renewable, correct? Something like that where correct. it be capped. That that might be a better way to do it. And then that way, that money doesn't automatically roll through a budget. See, I can't help but one. I think with the superintendent, it was different because the superintendent just so many different. Uh, avenues in the district and I, I understood that and, um, 
but this is so systematic. I mean, we have ASBO, we have ASBA, everything's in writing, all the deadlines are in statute. There is no real room to be like, oh, I didn't realize that this, we need to call Missy in to, to help get this worked out. So I, I just can't understand why we would need to use anything. If her last day is in J January, I don't understand why there can't be a prepared, this is what needs to happen over the next year. And her as a top level professional in the organization, be able to turn that over to the next person. And since we're only looking at hiring qualified candidates, mm -hmm. it's not like we're growing our own and I mean that the expectation would be there. There's other resources to use. I just think it it comes off as not good. That's that's my perception. It's going to be perceived that way, too, just like Gail's was. Mm -hmm. The phone started ringing right away. Oh, you're just looking for a way to funnel money to Gail Malay. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't the case. Um, but it turned out it didn't work out so well in the end, and I just don't want to see any more undue bad publicity on the school district. That was a little different because we had, we had directors who actually had to take on job duties and do more than what their normal I understand. Uh, expectations were. And so that's one thing. In this particular case, and if you remember, when we actually when we ended up not hiring the superintendent for that year, the purpose of it was so that we could have time for training. And we're really not having the amount of time for training that, that we anticipated, but at least to have the availability to, to have some time for that person to come in if it's needed. I mean, we may hire somebody that has the ability to do the deal and not have to hire some, have to have her come in you know and that's fine but um, I think this is just a precaution is all well since that whole process is well underway maybe we it would be best to just table this until the December meeting once we know what we're doing whether we're hiring somebody that has experience or we're hiring somebody that we anticipate we may have a need for this and I don't know. When is our, uh, when are we hoping to have someone take her place? Well, if, um, we were hoping to bring someone to the board in December. Okay. Yeah. And have we got, have we started interviewing candidates? And yes. All that? Okay. We began the process. Okay. I mean, to, to me, uh, <clears throat> This is a, such a, a technical job, it, you know, it's the money type of thing, it's the bean counters and all that, that uh, I, I sure wouldn't want to do it. And all this does is sort of let, let the district say, hey, uh, if we have to call on someone to clarify or to give a little bit of direction, and at the same time, uh, uh, you know, I hear, uh, I hear what people are saying. We don't want this to all of a sudden be another thing of where ten thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars is uh, used up and all that. But at the same time, uh, you know, I've been here a long time, and we've gone through a number of uh, people who uh, who have been business directors, and uh, some of them have been real good, and some of them have been not so good, and. Uh, it, you can get yourself into a pickle in a hurry. And, and an example was we just had an audit, and uh, the auditors come in, and I was really happy that they were here for the public, that this is a rather a complicated thing. And they did uh, look at some things on the two issues, and one of them was uh, the attendance type of thing. So you can get yourself into a real pickle, and someone might not know what they're doing. And it's nice to be able to fall back on someone that uh, has had the experience and can sort of uh, mentor you in getting the job done. And in the end, it seems to me like where that would fall on would be the superintendent to make that type of a determination on what we're doing. And, and it, we just have to have enough confidence in the people who run the district, the superintendent, that hey, uh, we'll be very circumspect in how this is done. Because if it isn't done right, uh, I mean, you can get into big problems with money. 
And that's the only reason that I'm a little cautious about this. Um, and at the same time, I hear what you're saying, and the goal what you're saying is that you just don't want this a blank check, that, that we want this person, whoever it is, hire someone real good, and they're moving forward and they're making the necessary progress. And if, if we never have to call on the, uh, this, we never have to call on it. If we have to call on it just for a, a short period of time, we do that. But that gives the superintendent some latitude. And then all of a sudden, because guess what? You know where this is going to fall back on? It's going to fall back on the superintendent. And uh, as a superintendent, I wouldn't want, I mean, uh, you know, unless I had an accounting degree or was a real good expert on this type of stuff, I wouldn't want that rolling back on me. But at the same time, you know, we've hired her, we got a lot of confidence in her, and that she can go ahead and uh, uh, make that call. And, and I'm hoping that we just have someone walk in and can do the job. But other than Keith Clark years ago, here is a guy that was our uh, person, uh, was our finance director for years, and was very familiar with it. And then after that, uh, we had a little bit of an issue. And uh, so, you know, that's that's why I, I think this. It, and it doesn't mean that we're spending the money. I mean, I don't like to spend money either. But when you had it the last time, you spent it. It's a different well, situation. It I, was it was different, but I, it's a totally different. And, and situation. maybe I do understand. Maybe the last time what we should have done is that should have been on the, the initial uh, issue when it uh, right. came in front of the board that that uh, that thing of where we would go ahead and provide a stipend to the directors that should have probably been right there from the get go. Could there be a clause put into the contract where you activate the contract? And if you don't use it in so much time that it sunsets. It goes back to the M&L budget. Yeah. You could when, say that. We, that, 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 may, that may not be a bad idea. And that yeah. way, if we're not using it, say, by March or April, or I'm just being arbitrary here in my dates, but if we're not using it by that point in time, that that, that money would simply revert to M&L when we're done. I would say you yeah. would go to the, to the term of whatever you're making this, if you're making it for a full year, because in, in the finance department, you've got different times a year that you have different things coming up mm -hmm. so you may not use it maybe this person is is well versed on on doing what they need to do in closing the year but maybe when it comes down to putting the budget together or doing the AFR or whatever they don't know and they need some assistance and in that case there you go and the other thing is that I, I hear what Nicole is saying but this position is not as simplistic as a lot of people may think it's not just adding a column of numbers and filling out a form and there it is there's a I, lot of I understand there's, that. yeah there's a lot of nuances there's a lot of agreements that we have with other entities in the city with, with you know and there those things sometimes you know require a little bit of history a little bit of knowledge and I could understand why the superintendent would want to have the flexibility to call on that person in case they needed it and so I, I just think this is a safety net as well. Could there be something like uh, to sort of allay the concerns? Could there be something written in there that like any, if this money is not used or yes. any unused money will go right back there. to m &L. Yeah. At and the then, end of the thing, and then I think this lets the public fine. know that, hey, we're aware of that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it do that automatically? Yeah. No. Yes, well it would, unless the board decided something different, yeah. but if you put it in the contract that way, then you have to do that. Yeah. So, I, I would say that I don't, I wouldn't have an issue doing it that way. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Um, the thing about it too, I'm in purchasing, I'm the procurement person, and if this safety net is not put in place and we can only do it when the governing board approves it once a month, if something happens and it doesn't you know, get set up like in November with governing board approval, that means you go to December and if it doesn't get done then, I cannot do a purchase order for a contracted employee or anybody else until I have that approval and that person cannot legally come <clears throat> come in and do anything for the district. So if this 
new person comes in, and I don't care what person it is, whether they've had school board experience or not, every school is different. And if they end up in a situation where they need an answer or they need somebody who has already had the job, they're not going, they don't have any recourse to go through. They can tell the superintendent, but she's not going to be able to do anything as far as calling somebody in to give them that answer or giving them that help. And all of my purchase orders, when I do them, have a contracted amount. I have to have the contract, and on the contract it says exactly what I put on the purchase order, and that purchase order is in there. All purchase orders that are issued and are not used by a certain period, I go in and I close them all, and it goes back to the budget automatically. But you need to have that safety net, otherwise you're setting this person up for failure because they're not going to be able to get the answers they need to get in a timely manner, especially now that our bond is passed and there's a whole lot of work that has to go with that. Thank you. Yes, yeah. it seems to me that uh, we've had three people, uh, Nicole, Pat, and um, Patty, all bring up excellent points. And one of the things that I want to do as a new school board member is be always aware of the public. We all see anything the public hears or reads, they pounce on us as if we're, we're mismanaging. It's a perception. And to me, that has to, that's the number one thing that must be avoided. We, we want to be transparent, of course, but it seems to me there's a way to word this, taking in account Patty's needs, Nicole's awareness of the public's perception, and then Pat talking about how it needs to work for Diana to have the latitude to make decisions. And it seems like they could be worded where there's the capacity there, but it's just not a, a hundred thousand, I mean 50,000 or whatever it is that is, is just put out there in the newspaper that it's worded in some way that Diana has the, the capacity to release it but without infringing upon what Patty needs to do. But I'm not going to be the one to try to work that. So that's what the superintendent is for. I think Pat expressed a little bit of what my concerns are. One of my concerns is that, excuse me, the um, uh, the, both of the candidates that are currently being considered neither have experience in our financial system. And so I know there might be some questions that come up even about that uh, until they come up to speed. And then the other piece would be, um, and I think it was brought up a couple of different people, that we do have a variety of agreements and contracts that are unique to our community. And so it would be nice to have the resource to ask about what is the history, how did this, this phrase or clause come into it, those are the pieces that I don't have because I don't have the history that would be helpful to have that. I don't see this as a, a spending a lot of time um, except in answering those kinds of questions to help us ensure that we're, that we're doing the right thing in the right time and in case the person isn't understanding or doesn't have facility with that particular system that they would get the assistance that they need. That's, that's kind of how I think. <coughs> Any other questions? Or? I guess I'd I, when you have mo money, it, it tends to incite some emotions that come to the surface, and I think a lot of emotions have been spent on this over the last year. In fairness to Missy, if I'm treating her as a professional, she needs to be notified that this is an opportunity because she doesn't have to accept this. She can reject this and say, I'm done, and walk away. You're not going to find somebody in the community that can come in and do this. So that's another thing to consider. How are we treating her? Um, and if you gave her some notice ahead of time that she might be open to coming back, because right now, I don't know. Um, but I, if I'm her, I would want to know that you're considering this and give me some advance notice. Well, I'm just going to say, Missy has been saying that she is going to retire since the bond failed last time. We've had plenty of time to hire somebody way in advance um, I'm disappointed in the lack of answers I've gotten over the years. I'm disappointed we just had an audit and we have a, the same issue that we had a single audit report issued in December of 2015. So I guess I just don't have the confidence. And I understand why Diana is putting this in because she needs to be able to answer questions. But I can't help but think in my mind when the last contract came up with Gail 
and I called Gail because I knew there'd be backlash and I asked her you know what happens if somebody from the district picks up the phone are you keeping a log you know of oh I, I answered this question and she said oh god no this is if I have to come back in and work because there was a catastrophe so if if we're worried that we can't pick up the phone and call Missy without having a purchase order in place to say hey can you clarify this well then I guess that would just kind of really um, express my concerns that I have with missing in the first place. So there, it's out on the table and it'll go to a vote and I've said my piece. But I, there are at least 15 questions that I still want answers to that have been submitted to Missy, to Diana, and I don't have those answers. And for that reason, I, there is no way I could vote on this. No way. I'd rather rip the Band-Aid off, use ASBO or any of the other organizations that we pay membership dues for to answer specific questions or rely on the team that knows each piece. Maybe they don't have the full picture like Missy does, but everybody should have an idea of some history because everybody's been here a long time. You know, if, if the whole school district can only rely on Missy to answer a question, well then we've got a cross-training issue that we should also probably start to consider. So, that's it. It's not personal. Really, it isn't. <laughs> for you it is, Roger, but not for Missy. Okay. Are we quite finished? Yeah. All right. Um, Can I broach another subject? Excuse me? Yeah. I just would like to know, we're going up on the 14th for this training. What is, what is the procedure, in better words, are we each going to drive our car? Uh, are we going to take a fleet vehicle? Okay. Are we going to be there two nights or one night? Because I'm sitting here looking at this, and they're saying lodging, six hundred thirty-six dollars. That's if we stay two nights. That's three hundred eighteen dollars a day per person. No, no, no. 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 That's totally that's combined. For everybody. Mm -hmm. That's for that's, everybody. That's for six people. It says. Maximum cost for a new board member. So the, the, that is actually is the three new board members or two nice. board member orientation. That's the total amount. Okay, that's what I wanted to know because I'm sitting okay. here looking look at this saying, boy, I'm going to love going to this place. <laughs> and once we knew who the three were going to be, I will be sending out an email with information on finding out if you're taking a personal car, if you need it. Okay. We have them reserved, but that's totally up to you guys on what you want to do. Yeah, I'm not making a big fuss about it. I just was sitting here looking uh -huh. at this saying, oh, no, that's, that's what we're paying for as per new board no, member. No, Boy, no, this no, guy's no, going to no, live, no. live good, you know? <laughs> conversation earlier and um, uh, a couple of people heard us on the radio at, at noon time but we had an opportunity on the radio to speak with Alan Temper Tempert Tempert um, and Alan shared that countywide there were approximately 4,000 uh, provisional ballots that are going to um, whoever verifies that they are okay to scan and another 3,000 or so countywide that were dropped off at the polls yesterday and so they anticipate there's still about 7,000 ballots that have not been counted maximum <coughs> um, and so the results are have not been called on the override because it is still too close without those ballots having been counted is that countywide or citywide? Those are countywide. And so his words were that about fourth, about a fourth of the ballots, typically about a fourth of them are like Havasu. Mm -hmm. And so um, that would still be enough ballots that could, if counted, switch it. And it could switch it. So, uh, so, you know, being Pollyanna, yes. <laughs> Did he give you any idea how long that might take? Because last time the bond was on, it took a few days for the final tally. Yes. In fact, he said that for the provisional ballots, they don't even have to have them back to him in order to scan them until next Tuesday. He thinks they'll be back sooner. But he, uh, he said after today, not, not today, but after today there would be daily updates, and he expected, he thought he would have them by the end of the week. 
end of this end of next week. This the end week. of this week. Oh, this yeah. And if not, we can get next those week. updates. Is that just on off the, the site? County on the county website. I will have a county um, voting website. Yes. So we're provisional ballots and then mail-in ballots that were dropped. Yes. Correct. Thank you. But final by Friday. Pardon me. Final by Friday. He, he, he hoped by Friday. He didn't promise that. He said that they had until Tuesday to actually get him those provisional ballots to be scanned. I, I, I would say next yeah. Wednesday. <laughs> That's what I would say. But then, I guess the point would be you could be checking the website. Right. He said he would do updates at the end of the day every day uh, after today. I don't remember the page last night, but does it have an updated on is there a date or a yes, time? Yes, there is a military time. Yeah. Yeah. I saw the military time, but at, mine never changed. Mine was on night. You have to refresh. Yeah. You have to keep refreshing it. Yeah, I was refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> it's just been a glitch with so many people were on it. Maybe. Maybe. Am I just stayed this one? My students are on it. It'll say updated and it'll have a military time. Okay. Um, just a quick question. So, um, because we're waiting on those ballots. Has there been any thought of what the plan B is going to be, or is there a committee that's being formed, or has the board had a chance to discuss that? So, yes, yeah, sent out an email to all staff today okay. that um, we are going to be reformulating the budget committee. Okay. I met with an administrative team this morning, um, gave them the list to identify their representatives because we do have people who have turned over from last year. Our first meeting will begin in um, December. We expect to have at least two in January. We would like to have a recommendation to the board in February. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Well, I just want to thank everybody who voted and who put in so much work into uh, getting people out and getting them informed on what was going on. And so we do have one victory, and that is that we got the bomb passed. So we still have something else ahead of us to get the override passed, and we might still pull it out. So mm -hmm. keep saying your prayers, but if not, you know, we may have to think about getting back out there and and doing it again. So, but thank you all for because uh, most of you here I know have worked on that, so I appreciate it. If and we were to go out for a special election, well, that would be a May thing. No, yeah, we're not allowed not to allowed. do that anymore. So it would have to be Two next years. November. Okay. Oh, yeah. Is it two year or one year? I thought it was two year. No, I think it's every year you can do. You can go next year. Okay. I'm pretty sure. I thought it was two. Yeah, I know. Okay. It costs like, what, 30000 to put it on the ballot? About? Well, the last go around, it cost us somewhere around seventy, mm -hmm. And I don't know, you know, uh, depending on what's on there and what else is there to split the cost up, you know, that's, that's the thing. So, I mean, it's a matter of coming up with that but those funds because where we usually go back to the community and you do some fundraising there and say if you want this back on the ballot then we need help yeah because to take it now back out of the M&O that's a problem yeah, yeah. yeah. How, much, how much discussion has there been today about the fact that the overhead was on the back of the ballot and the bond was on the front because I watched all those numbers I'm not sure what you said I crunched all of those numbers today, and it's quite obvious that um, the, the the same number of people who voted, whether they voted yes or no for the bond, that we, the same number of people did not vote by far for the override, yeah. and that's very felt telling. And I truly believe there should be some kind of a protest. I would like to know also if it's the Secretary of State or rules or statute that determines what goes on the ballot in what order because all of those uncontested positions could have all been put on the other side of the ballot as far as I'm concerned. And then if it is the Secretary of State, then we need to protest and say, you, 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 we spent $100,000 on this election and it, it, it came so close. And this cannot happen again. We tried that last year, well, last time, because we had the same issue. If you look, there's about 1,100 votes difference in who voted for the bond and how many voted for the override. And, you know, not to say that we would have gotten all of those people, but we would have gotten some of them. And the last time, the way that it was placed on there, you couldn't, it was so 
hard to find. You had to search for it. Did you try to find who determined? It's the county, and we went to the county, and uh, kind of got shut down. Well, um, just, this is not acceptable. So I, I want, I want a protest. I, I want something. It's this Alan Temper's office. He's the one that you so have to deal with. The other issue yes. is this time when they sent citizens the copy, when we got the copy, it showed that it was both on the front. So yes. everything was done up until we realized yes. that there was actual voting happened, that there was going to be two votes on the front. So we were handing out sample ballots. Right? Yes. Right. This time That's is different, really different than last time. I was yes. on a church meeting last week and I had the priest and one other person there tell me that they voted for the bomb, but they couldn't find the override. I and they said, the did you turn the ballot over? And they didn't. Well, so I, they missed voting for I the questions. Have, 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 have. I spent the day looking at numbers. Because I just, that's that's <laughs> Carol. She loves numbers. <laughs> and um, I would love to say, that because they didn't turn it over, the 205 and 206 numbers reflected what the bond did. So, we then have dialogue, and we said, well, we're sitting there saying yes, yes, for the override. The override was not in any dialogue on the back. It was M and O, maintenance and operation. Budget increase. Right, that's what we ran into before, that language of budget increase. Right. They go, uh-uh, live within your means. Right. Right. Done. Right. So that's the no matter how you promote it. At least, you know, that we could have worked on. I also looked at numbers and looked at the different precincts, and I saw that our, what I would consider, in my opinion, our district precincts, which were the four, we passed it, we passed both. There was North and the Desert Hills. And I don't know how much we spent on that side of Caliber. And so those are things I think we need to be reflective of. But, but I would like to go back and put to this, uh, all these things Carol's talking about, except for the very last point. Um, so much of this was determined by Alan Tipper. And I think if uh, I can protest all, all I want. I'll be there with you. This, no, yeah. the school board. The, the, I believe the school board needs to send in a formal protest and bring the Secretary of State in on this and get uh, ASPO, the, I mean, Arizona School Board Association in this and have them advocate and this this is something that has to be handled, addressed, and changed. And I, I would myself appreciate if our school board would put in a formal protest and then ask that it go all the way to the Secretary of State, send a copy to the Arizona School Board Association. They, they are advocates, we pay, we pay membership, and have this changed. Have you met with Alan? Not in a long time. Just, just like the vote's not over, and I know there's a lot online about people being disappointed, I think that we should reserve any that's protests fine. or anything that's until fine. it's final. Oh, no, that's, that's good. I like and that. I think it's important instead of, I know that's the first thing people want to do is protest when something's wrong, but I think it's really important to meet with the people that are making those decisions That's so you fine. fully understand what you're protesting. Because I don't think that it's too much to ask somebody to turn their ballot over. I really don't. I think, I think that as a voter you have a responsibility for that piece of paper to read okay. every inch of it. But Nicole, just like we want to be more transparent in this district and we want information accessible and make things easy when people are voting it should be so clear i will tell you myself i was in a hurry when i voted and i voted and i got to the bottom and i turned around to take it over to you know give it to the little, little box and i thought i didn't vote for the override and of course then i turned it over but i i'm involved with this Think of all of the other people who are not thinking like that, and they come to the to, to, to the bottom. And I am not the only one who has told me that. So, so we should make sure that the school stuff is always on the front page, and then together. what's on the back page? Together. Together. It, 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 it could all. I understand. Be there's also from the se Secretary of State. If that is probably her requirement, if or statute, that there's a certain order, but all that could be changed 
all of the people who were uncontested yeah, could yeah. have gone on the back. And they were just off the top. They took up a lot of space. My sister was on there. She was huge. She jumped off the page of me. And I said, well, where's the bottom override? They were in tiny little fonts at the bottom. Because <laughs> she was unopposed. I, I get that. She needed to be on the back. It could be better. I just want to back up. I work out of town. I work out in Parker. And a lot of people that live in Havis who work down there. And I'm, in the last two days, because they all came to me, how do I vote? All this other stuff for legislature, for yes, yes. All day today, I probably 45 people that I know walked up and said, I couldn't find the override. And then I look on the back, it says something about budget. Well, I thought I voted yes for the override and bond on the front, and this was an additional increase just for the budget. So they got confused, and half of those people, at least 20 of them, said, I didn't even vote on that proposition on the override or the budget increase because they did not understand the verbiage from what the state put on there and from what we were advertising. And maybe that's the thing. I talked to Steve Greeley this morning about this whole issue and we talked about the fact that, you know, if we go out again next time, it would be easier to just like really focus in on the language because a lot of that, like Nancy was saying, just the way that it's stated which you can't change. Which you cannot change. It's by statute. Well, it, it has to say it that way so that at least we could make people aware of that. And if there's one question out there that needs to be answered, then I think we'd have a better shot at it. Yeah. And so that's, you know, that was our discussion this morning. There are lots of things that they should all be addressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's unfortunate because the way that it is, I mean, even my husband, he looked at that and he goes, if you didn't tell me all about this and I didn't know, he said I would have voted no for that second one because he didn't like the way that it was written. And some ballots it was all on the same page. So because I, when I got the sample ballots, Four versions of a ballot. The yeah. sample was on the front. I sent them out to the committee. So we had, I mean, I sent them out to everybody I knew. We had the opportunity to pre-warn people, but I'm just saying, there there's so many different issues that they deal with and so many different ballots that it's not always as simple as I'm just sure. saying. So, I'm sure. and Alan Temper is a man of great integrity for anybody who has never met him and will go to the ends of the earth to bring you in and be as transparent about everything well, that goes on. His integrity. Right. I'm questioning. But he may be the person that can help us okay. in how we move forward okay. to maybe have a better outcome next time if it doesn't. See, I still have hope that it's going to pass. So. You just want a leader in a position like that to anticipate and look mm -hmm. at That's something from the voters' viewpoint. Yes. As yes. many voters as they you They don't know people. our voters. It's That's any our voter, job to get involved any voter, and try to help. Any voter's viewpoint. But everybody any has a different viewpoint. issue is what I'm saying. Everything no. is diff important at a different level to different no. people. No. So Alan no. can't no. sit no. there and no. say, no. this no. is no. really no. important, no. so I'm going to rearrange all four ballots to make sure that Lake Havasu sees this. He can't anticipate that from a county level. That's all I'm saying. And, I think, and I think this is something that this is the group that can discuss. Sure. Like and we don't have to right. keep going. I just man. wanted to make sure that people understood. You know, it's yeah. one man making a decision for, I don't even know how many different ballots he has to do the wording for, and he accepts the wording from the attorneys that approve it from all the different school districts and then has to fit it on one page front and back. I think so. there's an easier cure. If you're friends with Alan, you can mention it to him. You know, if you've got something on the back of the form, there should be a statement at the bottom of the first page, continued on the back. There is. And if that statement you have to is read there, it though. That's incumbent it's, on each but voter. But if that statement is there, then it's the voter's fault. Yeah. Okay. I think we're done. With, do we have any other updates? Is that enough? I okay. wanted to say congratulations to, yes. you know, all the school board mm -hmm. uh, candidates and the top three. But great job to everybody who ran, and I think you all set a real nice example for the mm -hmm. public on how to run yes. in an yes. election. So. Congratulations yeah. to everyone. Okay, so we're going to take a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Terry? Michael Cohen? Yes. Roger Smith? Yes. Pat Rooney? Yes. Nancy Andoni? Yes. Don't ever Yes. Thank you.